Good day everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about motion and different motion equations uh, that go along with the topics that we will discuss today. We will also discuss different terminology that is used. Now, if you haven't noticed already, there's different sections relating to motion, um, which we will discuss in future videos. However, for right now, I'm going to show you how to properly fold it. It's almost like a brochure. So we're going to start by taking one and connecting it to the other corner. All right. And then once we've completed that, we're going to take the one again and connect it to the center fold right here. And then we're going to take the corner of the six and connect it to the center fold again. All right. And then we're going to fold this back. Just to loosen up the bends just a little bit to make it easier to fold. So it looks like this. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and here we're back to square one. All right, so let's dive in. Motion is essentially a change in position, and I want to discuss with you different terms that is used when we are trying to find motion. So one important aspect is distance. So distance is represented by a lowercase d, and its unit of measurement for the metric system is in meters. All right, so the definition of distance is it measures how far and object is from a reference point. So one example of this is the distance from one side of your desk to the other. Some units that can be used as I previously mentioned, are meters. And then we could use miles, which is not a part of the metric system, or kilometers. Maybe describe longer distances, um, like distances on the highway, or the height of a building. All right, so the next, um, the next term we're gonna look at is time. And that time is represented by a lowercase t. And uh, the unit for time is s. S stands for seconds. And so our definition of time is how long it takes for an event to occur. So we could talk about maybe you have a doctor's appointment in one week. That's a length of time. Um, you have to be at school in one hour. That's another length of time. So different units we could use are hours, minutes, days, or years. So for our next term we have speed. Now speed is represented by a lowercase s and its unit is meters per second. Now definition of speed is it's how far and 
object goes in a certain amount of time. Now, we could also describe speed as scalar, which essentially means it doesn't have a direction, but it has a time. So a formula we could use to find speed. So S speed equals distance over time. Or if we want to look at the units, unit, we have a mile over an hour equals M over H, or as it's more commonly known as miles per hour. Our next term is velocity. Velocity is represented by a lowercase v. And it is also uses the unit meters per second. However, this is a vector because not only does it have a speed, but it has a direction. So the definition of velocity is its speed with direction. So an example of, so usually if we we're just looking for speed, for we could use 20 miles per hour. Um, and that's a measurement for speed. However, if we're going to look at velocity, not only do we need to know the amount of time an object goes, However, we also need to know a, a distance, or um, not a distance, but a direction it goes. So, east, west, north. Um, and now, finally, our last term is acceleration. And acceleration is represented by a lowercase a. Its unit is meters per second squared. All right, and so as for our definition, it's the change in velocity over time. So a formula for acceleration, acceleration equals the change, delta means change, delta velocity over time. However, delta velocity can also be represented by the final velocity minus the initial velocity all over time. And so the unit can also be written out as this. So we have meters over seconds divided by seconds. And so to get this pretty little equation right here, we divide, we have meters over seconds times one over S, looking for the reciprocal. We go over, so if we write out meters per second longitudinally, and then we have one over S, and that gives us M over S squared, or meters meters over seconds squared. All right, now onto our next concept. We have motion equations. I'm just gonna fold this back so it's a little easier for me to write on. All right, so once again, I'm going to show you this similar formula, acceleration equals delta V over time. Once again, delta meaning change. And I'm also going to show you that VI represents initial velocity. And VF equals final velocity. All right, so now that we have now, what I, our first step is I want to get rid of this T. 
All right, so to get rid of it from down here, I want to multiply both sides by t. So a will equal delta v all over t times t times t. All right, and so these two are going to cancel out. So now we're left with a t. And I'm also going to write out uh, the other definition for a change in delta. Oh, uh, excuse me, a change in velocity. So we have, if you subtract the initial velocity from the final velocity, that equals the same thing. All right? And so the next thing I want to do is I want to get um, v, uh, final velocity by itself. So I'm going to add both sides by the initial velocity. And so that will leave me with v i plus a t equals v f, or the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time equals the final velocity. So our first equation, if you haven't guessed, is going to be the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. All right. So for number two, or actually for two to four, they're a little bit more um, uh, difficult to work out. So I'm just going to give them to you. We have distance equals the initial velocity times time plus half of the acceleration times t or time to the second power. Make sure you don't forget your power up here. All right, so for number three, we have the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the distance. And so finally, we have velocity equals distance over time but this only occurs when acceleration equals zero. All right, so we're gonna go down to this last little area. So it says solving motion word problems. And in this, it says draw a diagram to represent the variables. Um, we're not gonna worry about that step for right now. I'm just gonna set the table up, table up the data table up with the um, SI units. So our variables are going to be the initial velocity, the final velocity, distance, acceleration, and time. All right, and so for our unit, our unit for the initial velocity is meters squared. Our unit for the final velocity is meters squared. Our unit for distance is meters. Our acceleration is meters over seconds squared. And finally, we have seconds, which represent time. All right, I hope this video helped. Thank you so much for watching.